Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, dear viewers. You are welcome to another glorious day today. By the grace of God, it's Wednesday, January 3rd, year 2024. And I want to appreciate God for His grace upon our lives. I want to bless the name of the Almighty God for gradually seeing us through the year 2024. And I want to congratulate you because it is not by your power, it is not by my power that we are alive. We thank God for His grace at all times. May His name be praised in our lives in Jesus' name. Please, I want you to invite every member of your family to be part of this money devotion. And I pray that Lord will speak His mind to all of us and guide our path throughout today and beyond in Jesus' name. Please let us pray. Almighty Father, we honor you for who you are to us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us grace to sleep yesterday and to wake up this morning. Some people slept yesterday, they could not wake up this morning, but you have granted, granted unto us this great privilege. And by the time we see another day, day by day, we return all thanks to you. Thank you, Lord, for this another chance to live our lives to please you. We pray that you speak your mind to us this morning. Guide us in all our ways. Help us to understand you better on a daily basis. That our lives, O oh God, shall be vessels unto honor here on earth. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We want to welcome you all to this morning devotion. And our text is taken from Psalm 10. Psalm 10. We read the old chapter of Psalm 10, verse 1 to verse 18. And our topic this morning is be sincere with God. Be sincere with God. I read the text. Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride persecutes the poor. Let them be caught in the plots which they have devised. For the wicked boasts of his heart's desire. He blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. His ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he snares at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. He sits in the locking places of the villages. In the secret places he murders the innocent. His eyes are secretly fixed on the helpless. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lies in wait to catch the poor. He catches the poor when he draws him into his net. So he crushes, he lies low that the helpless may fall by his strength. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face, he will never see. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand. Do not forget the humble. Why do the wicked renounce God? He has said in his heart, you will not require an account. But you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief, to repay it by your hand. The helpless commends himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness until you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations have perished out of his land. Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. 
you will cause your hear to hear, to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress no more. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We thank God for the privilege of reading the word of God this morning. I want to thank God for making us to always want to know more of God. It is not by our power that we are called children of God. It is not because we are so special. It is not because we are so prayerful. It is not because of anything at all. It is not because of our intellect. It is not because of our wealth that we are able to read and study the word of God on a daily basis. But I want to believe that God has given us grace. God has called us out of darkness to his marvelous light. And that is where you and I are privileged this morning to gather together with members of our families to present ourselves unto God and to look into the perfect law of liberty to guide our footsteps to also to, to, to think deeply this morning our ways of life, whether we are on the right track or we have really gone via the path of righteousness that is expected of us. And so this morning, we want to look at the topic that says, be sincere with God. To me, this is a topic that addresses every individual. A topic that tells us, that calls us to action, to look inward, to have a self-appraisal, self-examination of who you are. Several times we live a cosmetic life. We portray ourselves the way we are not. And we are too quick to display holiness without substance. Several times we are too quick to give the blames. I have been doing this. Why is it that God is not happy with me? Why is it that God does not answer my prayer? Why is it that I work diligently on a daily basis, but there's nothing to show for it? But this money, we want to bring ourselves to the dry ball and ask personal questions, senior questions that will guide us in our work with him throughout this year. And I pray that as we do this diligently, mercy will speak for us in Jesus' name. Now, and this topic is telling us to be open to ourselves and to be sincere with our relationship with God. To have a, an intimate relationship with God. To have a soul lifting fellowship with God. And I would like us to know this morning that God's blessings are always on the righteous. God does not baptize iniquity. God turned deaf ears to act of sin. And day by day, God expects the sinner to come to him and have a change of heart and have a turnaround in his work with God. Now, how can this be possible if one is not faithful to God? Now, looking at the psalm, this is one of the psalm. It's a song of confidence in God's triumph over evil. And the psalm is started by saying that, Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? This is a misunderstanding of who God is. Personally, I want to believe when you do not have the Depth, knowledge, in depth knowledge of the of God, of the word of God. When you don't have the proper understanding of who God is to you, there's tendency that you misrepresent Him in the negative. When you don't know the requirement of God for your life part time, when you don't know the will of God for you, and by the time God starts acting in His own way, there's a tendency that you misunderstand the mind of God for you part time. And the question you ask yourself is that, why will God be far away? Why will God decide to take a leave? Why will God decide to abandon you? Don't forget what the psalmist says in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1, that says, the eyes of the Lord, the ears of the Lord, talking about what God does on a daily basis. And there reminds us that, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor is ear heavy that it cannot hear. Verse 2 says, But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear you. 
God, our God, is always willing to be with us at all times. God, your God, it is the delight of God to do what we as children of God will benefit. It's always closer to us more than any other person. God has never in any way disappointed his own, his own, those who are God's delight. But that Isaiah opened our eyes to understand why it seems God is far away. Why it seems God decides to keep mood sometimes. It is because of our attitude, of our way of life. We thank God we just entered a new year. And God has begun this new year with us. And I want to believe that God will join with us. God will see us through to the end of this year. But one key thing that I want, I want us to pay close attention to is that in your work with God this year, be sincere with God. What is your life like? Is your life attracted to God? Or your life, your attitude repairs God's presence? What is your life like? And our topic this morning is bringing us to the grassroots to understand what God expects from us. And it is only a sincere heart, a heart full of sincerity that we receive from God. It's not about your gymnastics. It's not about what you display. It's not about what you claim to be. It is about who you are in the sight of God. God is looking for a faithful and a sincere heart who will stand in all of his presence this year. Of, of course, you, people around you know that you speak in tongues, but of course you know yourself that even though you speak in tongues, but your heart is full of death. You think you can sing, you are, you are, you are a singer, you are a choir, you sing melodiously in the church, but of course you know that your heart is full of bitterness. Be sincere with God this year. God wants to pass through you. God wants to do something new, something great, something spectacular in your life. But our topic this morning is reminding us about our own place, about what we should do in order for God to draw nearer unto us day by day. And I pray that the Lord will help us. The Lord will grant unto us grace to be sincere and to be faithful in our work with him throughout this year in Jesus' name. Now, from our passage, it says, when Jeremiah said to God, Oh Lord, you have deceived me. And I was deceived. You are stronger than I. And you have prevailed. I have become a loving stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. Jeremiah 27. And I thought he had gone too far. This passage tells us that from the word of Jeremiah, it seems this man had gone too far by accusing God, by laying this blame on God, the supreme God. God who sees the secrets of our hearts. God who knows every intent of man. Of course, I want to believe that Jeremiah was saying this to express his mind, his situations before God. But of God, God knows what man does for time. And God knows everything that happens to man for time. Then the question that will run through the mind of Jeremiah was, why would God do this? And of course, maybe at a time in our lives, we think that God is so far away from you. Or we think that God has deserted you. Or you say God has forsaken you. But the big question is that can God forsake his own child? Can God abandon his own child? Can God decide his own child? I want to be sincere to you today. No, it is not possible. Except for your attitude. Except because of what you have done. Now, I, and I was surprised that God did not kill him. Though he virtually corrected him. Throughout scriptures, saints that have gone before us, found times and occasions to be very sincere with God. The psalmist was troubled that God seemed to be standing far away from him. He could not understand why God would hide himself in his time of trouble. At one point or the other, we may be in situations where it seems God is so far away, particularly in great troubling times or time of extreme lack of sickness. At such points, it may seem God does not care, but it is never true. God never abandons his own. God never abandons his own. Even in times of trouble, in times of difficulty, the same God also, know, we also know what God is capable of doing. 
as part of the attributes of God. I would like to take you to Psalms 46, verse 1. He says, God is our refuge. God is our strength. A very present help in trouble. When you are in trouble, God is there with you. When you are in distress, God is there with you. When everybody has abandoned you, God is there with you. When you think all hope is lost, that is when God raises hope and bless your endeavor. He said, therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. That river flows from God. And that is why if you know yourself, if you know what God is capable of doing, you will never think in life that God can abandon you. Therefore, this morning, I want you to be sincere with God. Have a clear heart in your disposition with God. Have a clear mind in your relationship with God. What is the type of life do you live? What type of person are you? Are you the type that have an open heart to God? Or you are the one that indulge in secret sins? If you indulge in secret sins, the Bible says the prayer of a sinner is an abomination to God. And the God will not hear your prayer. God will pretend as if he does not see you. Well, because at that time, you are not his. Therefore, whatever that can think or you think that has made God to be far away from you, it may be as a result of your attitude. It may be as a result of what you have done. Or it may be as a result of what you involve yourself in. That is not of God. That God detests. That God frowns at. And it behoves on us this morning as we continue our journey in the year 2024 to examine yourself. Look inward. Be sincere to yourself. And be sincere with God. Are you on the right path? Are you working to please God? Or you are working in the flesh? The Bible says there's nothing we do in life, whatever we do in flesh. If it is not done in the spirit, it cannot please God. You may be a prayer warrior. If your lifestyle is just a show off or to let people know who you are for showmanship, it cannot please God. You may be somebody that you have raised the dead and because of that it has now gone to your head. You are now so arrogant. You are not so full of, your, of yourself. Whatever you do in flesh cannot please God. It's not about your donation in God, in the house of God. You may build a church for God. You may build an edifice called church and giving it to people of God for worship. If it is done out of showmanship, if it is done out of selfish desire, if it is done in order for people's applause, it cannot please God. But God expects us to do our work diligently in such a way that his name will be glorified. And that is why we need to be sincere with God. What is the intent of your heart? That thing that you do, the donation you give, what is the motive behind it? The harms you give to your, to your neighbors, what is the motive behind it? Be sincere with God so that God can be happy with you in all the days of your life. And I pray may the Lord reveal his mind to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Even your prayers, you pray that God should answer your prayer and heal you from your sickness, from your disease. Of course, you know the reason why you embark on that three days fasting and prayer to get healed is to deal with somebody in your office. God will not answer that kind of prayer. Why? Because your motive is quite wrong. God wants us to pray for any, but what is the motive of your heart? Everything you do in life, God looks at the motive. God looks at the intent of our heart. God looks at our desire before God moves ahead. And that's why you need to be sincere with God this morning. You need to be sincere with God this year. You need to be sincere with God in your work with God. If you are not sincere, if you are not faithful, if you are not faithfully working with God, you may be disappointed. And I pray that will not be your testimony. May God guide you throughout this year. May mercy speak for you at all times in Jesus' name. Therefore, whenever you are in such situation, when you are in a crossroad, when you are in a situation whereby you think that God has abandoned you, remember the answer for the psalmist in verse 14. I want to take you to verse 14. Verse 14 says, But you have sinned, for you observe trouble and grief, to repay it by your hand. The helpless commit himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. And that is what you should always look at all times, that God cannot abandon you. 
you, that God cannot fail you. He is the father of the fatherless. He is the hope of the hopeless. And that is what God can do in your life. I pray the Lord will suppress you. The Lord will not fail you. The Lord will not abandon you. And I would like to also take you to Isaiah chapter 49 from verse 14. Isaiah chapter 49 from verse 14. To also know that God is always interested in your situation. He says, But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. Verse 15. He said, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget. Yet I will not forget you. I will not forget you because I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. I pray God will not forget you. The Lord will not forget you. The Lord will not abandon you. The Lord will not forsake you. Throughout this year, God will do something extraordinary in your life. But the role you must play, you must be sincere with God. Your life must be the life that God expects. Are you living a stainless life? Are you living a blameless life? Or you are living a life that goes contrary to the will of God? My prayer for you this year, God will help you. God will sustain you. God will give you the grace to live a pure life in Jesus' name. But you do see, God sees, He hears. God is never unaware of your real situation. God is never uncaring about what you are going through. He knows. He knows what about you. He knows what you are going through. Are you downcasted? God knows. Are you burdened at heart? God knows. Are you troubled? Are you under the attack of the devil? God knows. What you need to know is to be sincere, be bare before God. He knows your situation. He knows what you are going through. And God will bring you solution at the right time. The timing of God is different from ours. And the Bible says God makes everything beautiful in his own time. What you need to do is just commit your way to God. Lean on him. Lean on him. Put your trust in him. Be faithful to God this year. And he will step into your situations. He will grant unto you breakthrough. He will give you joy. And he will journey with you throughout this year. But I want you to know that his timings are not necessarily ours. So it will sometimes seem he is late. Sometimes God may be late. Don't forget what happened in John chapter 11. At the, when, when John, the friend of Jesus, died. Jesus deliberately delayed so that his name will be glorified. People of God, don't bother yourself. You just started this year. Walk with God side by side. And whatever it tells you to do, do it. Because God is never late. God is never late. It will not be late in your situation. Also, we learn from the same verse that God is the helper of the fatherless. God is ever willing to help you, to aid you. He's ever willing to help you. Even ever willing to carry you when your own strength fails. God can do all things. He has never abandoned his own. God will never abandon you. You can sincerely tell him how you feel and watch him come through for you. This year, be open to God. Do not hide anything from him. Because he sees you more than you see yourself. What is your journey? What is your itinerary? What is your plan? What are your schedules this year? Place them before God. What do you intend to do this year? Place them before God. Are you planning to embark on a journey? Place it before God. Are you planning to get married this year? Commit it to the hands of the Almighty God. Are you trusting God for admission to university this year? Let God know about it. Tell God about it. Are you trying to go for admission for, for visa interview this year? Whatever it is, let God know about it. God makes everything beautiful in his own time. And our God can never be late. I pray this year the Lord will say to you early, as you continue to put your trust in God, as you continue to hand over your schedules, your itinerary, and everything about you to God's hand this year, I pray the Lord will show up for you. The Lord will be there for you at all times. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will not go down. I pray this year shall be better than last year. What you could not achieve last year, by the mercy of the Almighty God, God will do it for you this year. Breakthrough from Almighty God shall be your testimony. And every day of this year, 
shall launch you onto a greater height. God will move you forward, backward never, forward ever. As you prepare and as you plan to resume your work, may probably you are a civil service, a civil servant, or you plan to start your business this year, may God go ahead of you. God will grant unto you breakthrough. God will grant unto you excellence. I pray for exceptional breakthrough upon you this year. That shall be your testimony. 2024 shall be your year of joy. 2024, the Lord will restore hope unto you. 2024, the Lord will comfort you. 2024, the Lord will grant unto you success. 2024, the Lord will grant unto you breakthrough. Day by day, light of the Lord will shine upon you. Darkness will not overcome you. Principalities and powers will not have power over your life. The grace to lean on God. The grace to faithfully serve God this year. The grace to, 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 to put your, to, your trust in God. This year, may the Lord grant unto you. And that you continue to walk in the way that is accepted for you. The way that leads to God's presence. The way of holiness. The way of righteousness. I pray for you that your footsteps will not slip up. The mercy of the Lord will speak for you. But today I want to ask you, Lord, to help you. I pray that the Lord will help you. The Lord will help you. I ask God on your behalf today that the Lord will help you. Where you are helpless, God will show up for you. And this year shall be a better year for you. Thank you, blessed Father. We decree that today, O oh God, go ahead of us. Clear our ways from every part of obstacle, every hindrance. Father, you will roll away and your joy shall be our portion. Beautify our lives, O oh God, to live and walk to your praise and glory. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Dear viewers, I want to appreciate you for being part of today's Devotion, we pray the Lord will see you through. We meet again tomorrow, same time, same station. Thank you and God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.